all the books. Hey, hey, it's time for book reviews. Hello everyone and welcome to Fort Master's vlog for the Warm of the Thousand Gaming System, created by Games Workshop based in the UK. And welcome to my 47th Auto Drama review. Today I'm gonna review the first Auto Drama from the Echoes of Revelation collection, which were a part of the 2016 Advent calendar. Oh man, 2016, that was some time ago. In this collection we have the Auto Dramas called Perpetual, written by Dan Abnett, The Soul Severed, written by Chris Rafe, and Valerius, written by Gav Forb. Uh, I'm gonna do them out of order just because they will fit in more chronologically together with the how I'm reviewing them currently. So we begin with Day 9, The Soul Severed. It's performed by Gareth Armstrong, John Banks, Steve Conlin and Louis Soto. Here we can begin to talk about the front cover for the collection and then we can move over to the individual front covers for these other dramas. On it, we see Eidolon carrying his iconic hammer surrounded by cacophony as their armor is melting together and their old colors are falling off. I think this is a great image overall and the perfect for this story. It lends a lot from Fortress vision of the Emperor's children and, and expands upon that vision. I've give this 10 out of 10 forks. We can continue with, with the front cover for this other drama. It shows the broken mark of the Emperor's children slowly falling apart to symbolize their legion status. In the background we see the purple color that is slowly melting away, giving a slight hint of at what's to come. I really like this front cover and I will give it 7 out of 10 forks. Let's see what this story is all about. For more than 200 years, the armies of the Emperor of Mankind fought to reconquer the galaxy. Led by the superhuman Primarchs, the Space Marine Legions brought countless worlds back under the rule of ancient Terra. Now Horus, once honored, warmastered and favored son of the Emperor, has been corrupted by the whispered promises of Chaos. At his command, the Imperium is torn apart by a terrible and bloody civil war, the likes of which the galaxy has never seen. There are some who whispered that Horus' rebellion was not of his own devising, but orchestrated by more sinister powers. While such thoughts are tantamount to heresy, they pale next to the notion that many noble heroes and champions of Terra are in some way blessed by a higher power still. Yet the war still rages across the Imperium and all now fall towards the throne world itself. As Lord Commander Primus, Eidolon leads the Emperor's children in the absence of his Primarch, who even knows where the Demon Prince Fulgrim resides now. But a challenge from within the Legion forces Eidolon to confront one of his rivals, the ambitious Arcorian, a capable officer and tactician who would see the Legion return to glory. Descent is unacceptable. It is time for the Cacophony to be set against their erstwhile brethren. Gareth Armstrong gives the narration once again, a much appreciated deed. He narrates that all of the traitor legions had a turning point for where there was no going back. This story tells the story of the final fall of their legion, after the combined action with the death guard trying to hunt down the white scars in the path of heaven, Eidolon leads the biggest remains of the legion. He has cast off the obsession of the Primarch and sees the time of following Fulgrim as a bygone and they are pleased to do as they want. Eidolon is voiced by Louis Soto, I believe, and he gives a convincing act of the Lord Commander who was filled with hubris but who has learned from his first death. His vexillary, the orchestrator Lekos Fodion, is also played by Louis Soto, I believe. He has some special sound effects made so it sounds like he's gurgling out of an inserted vox distorter which distances him, him from sounding too much alike of Eidolon. Perfectly done by someone who is supposed to be sounding like a deeply corrupted noise marine of the Emperor's children. We can listen to how both of them sound like. Has it been made for us by our new gods? Did they fashion it from nothing to be our glorious tomb? His vexillary, the orchestrator Lekas Fodion, gurgled into a swollen box distorter. Slaves! Slaves! Yes, but not yet! Lord Commander Arcorian is played by Steve Conlin, 
Now I like his stoic performance and officer stuck in the past. Now my only problem is that he is described as equally corrupted as the others, in appearance at least, but his voice doesn't reflect that entirely. If his description would have leaned more towards the fact that he wasn't as corrupted as Eidolon, I would have bought his this take on the role a little further. His jabs at Eidolon is quite sassy, I would say. That comes of fighting, Lord Commander Eidolon. Arcorian's deep voice was calmer, more soldierly, without the highborn Chimosian flavor that normally infected the speech of the Legion's elect. Perhaps fighting is something you might think to try. <laughs> I fought last alongside Mortarion. Did you know that? I helped him find something he'd lost. So you might remember from my review The Path of Heaven that I liked the take on Eidolon of Chris Wraith, but I did not like the overused joke of If you see him, be kind to pass on my regards. Using it three times in two different stories short within each other felt a little poor. So these two praetors of the Legion decide to meet on neutral ground to discuss the future of the Legion. This is something I like and I would have wanted to see more of. The internal politics of the Emperor's children after the descent of chaos and the absence of a Primarch. It could reminisce a little bit of that of Prince of Kraus, which does this very thing, but I imagine Chris Ray would succeed in doing it in his own thing, with their own spin on it all. No, this story doesn't go that route, as that when they finally meet up, we find out, as expected, that it was a trap all along. The chaotic nature of the traitor legions is impossible to escape. It turns out into a battle between two sides, where Alcorian had the upper hand at first, but this battle leads the cacophony to erupting the highest sound they ever let out, which is a part of an unplanned Slaneshe ritual. The sound is so dangerous it destroys Ikorian's forces, even the tanks won't escape it. After their scream is done, the ritual is complete where the old colors of the Emperor Shiller melts off, leaving only black and pink contrast and the old markings are now changed to Slaanesh. So I'm heavily split by the ending which it focuses on. If I understand Chris Wraith's synopsis for the story correctly, is that this is when the cacophony turns into the 40k noise marines, when the purple and gold washes away and instead it turns over to black and pink as we know them in the 40k timeline. So on one hand I like the inclusion of a ritual but on the other hand, I liked more the idea of them slowly losing those colors individually. And as this story is painted up as their fall into Slanesh, but I would argue that they have already fallen long ago in the novel called Fulgrim. And cutting out the politics uh, out of it this all was a bummer. I could definitely see a novella that properly explored several perspectives and characters as they tried to hold the Legion together with their own personal goals and agenda as we saw in the previous novel The Path of Heaven where we saw two factions of the Emperor's children forming. First those that held on to the, the original legion and what they stood for by holding on to their old colors and remaining pure and then they hold, ha had those that fell into deep deprivation and decadency. You could say that I simply want more Emperor children, but despite my personal feelings about it all, I, I think it's a great other drama, and the actual battle at the end, the deceit and the counter deceit is handled quite well, and I also like the characters present in the story. So as the title refers to, it has th several different meanings. The most obvious one is the epithet that Eidolon gets after his resurrection and the disappearance of Fulgrim. But it has two other deeper meanings as well, I would argue. Uh, the narrative says, at the time of the siege, all legions would have gone through what we call the Day of the Turning. The Emperor's children were amongst the first to fall into deep, full corruption. So it makes sense that they would be the ones to make the turn first of them all. I would also say that the Soul Server title re refers to the Legion cutting off their official ties to the past as their old Legion colors wash away and it is replaced by pink and black as we know them instead of and their souls are lost as corruption spreads throughout what is left of them. I would also say that it cuts ties with their former Primarch as they are now officially on their own without him. 
So this is a really good audio drama, but it has its flaws, and I think it had a lot more potential if it was written in another format, or a longer format at least. So I will give this other drama 8 out of 10 folks, and with that I'll conclude this other drama review. Thank you very much for watching this other drama review. See you around everybody, bye bye!